Hi and welcome to the Criterion Collection Reviews by Nate Jackson. Today our review is the third entry in number 124, the Carl Theodore Dreyer box set. Gertrude, which is number 127, directed by Carl Theodore Dreyer, running time of 116 minutes. Released in 1964, it was Dreyer's final film, and quite possibly the worst yet. Oh my god! Oh my god, I mean... Ah. Oh my god, 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 oh my god. Imagine if the whole review was me looking off in one direction and just addressing you as if I would like you didn't even exist seriously um it's oh my god okay in the box set this is I mean I, I definitely I was really harsh on Day of Wrath this makes me look at Day of Wrath a little bit more at least I knew what the hell was going on in Day of Wrath. A little bit. At least I knew a little bit of what was going on. This... You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do something I've never done before. Because I have absolutely no clue what's going on, I'm going to review, read you the Wikipedia plot line. How Wikipedia summarizes it. Because I can't, I can't talk about this one, so... Here we go. Gertrude, a former opera singer in Stockholm in the early 20th century, is married to the lawyer and politician Gustav Kanning. Gertrude tells her husband that he, she, he has become more in love with his career and status than with her. She also tells him that she has met another man who loves her more than anything else, and that she therefore prefers him to her husband and wants a divorce. Gertrude meets her lover, the promising young pianist Erlen Johnson, in a park. The two go to Johnson's house. Gertrude tells him how devoted she is to him. In the evening, Gustav goes to pick up Gerard, Gertrude at, up at the opera where she said she, she had said she would be, but can't find her. The, evening, the next evening, the Cannings attend a dinner party at the house of the poet Gabriel Lidman, with whom Gertrude has had a relationship in the past. Gertrude greets her friend Axel Nygren, who attends the same party. Gert, Gustav confronts Gertrude about the opera and demands one last night with her before the separation. Lindman tells Gertrude that he had met Jansen at a party where he had bragged about Gertrude as his latest conquest. When Gertrude meets with Jansen the next day, she tells him that she wants to go away with him and leave everything else behind. He tells her that he cannot because he is expecting a child with another woman. Lindman makes an attempt to persuade Gertrude to leave with him instead, but without success. When Lindman and Gertrude were a couple, just like Canning, he had valued his career above her. Canning makes a last attempt to persuade Gertrude to stay with him, even after her, even allowing her to keep her lover at the same time. The attempt fails, and Gertrude moves alone to Paris to study psychology. Thirty years later, Gertrude, together with Nygren, looks back at her life. She says that love is the only thing that meant, means anything in life. She is now alone because of her refusal to compromise on that position, but does not regret anything. So that's what uh, Gertrude is about. Look, I know what he was trying to do. I know that, you know, that he was making a movie, you know, that, like, was trying to be, you know, something different. A movie that he really believed in. But, if you keep, if you keep reading that article, the audiences didn't believe in it. The critics didn't believe in it. I mean, it... I mean, some some got it, but it's just like so many people booed it and walked out. I probably would have. I would have walked the fuck out too if you know if I didn't have any like obligation to it. You know, 
But, you know, this is, I mean, I didn't want to stop the movie. I'm not stopping it. You know, I want to see every minute of this and see if I can get something out of this. And I couldn't get any a damn thing out of this. The, I think I think the best part of it was the scene where they're at the dinner and the guy makes a speech. After after the, the, the I don't know who it was, but the guy makes a speech after the, I think it's the, the poet, Gabriel. He makes a speech after the one guy talks about sex and his sexual prowess and all that. That was the best thing because I'm probably gonna sample that for my music. So, uh, yeah, that was pretty. That was that was cool. But apart from that, oh god. And I mean, oh, I mean, of course, yes. The whole thing is the like all the long, long scenes. I think I think they said I think they said there was um, fifty scenes altogether. F like fifty, only fifty. Oh no, it was noted for his main long taste, which includes a nine minute fifty six second take of Gertrude and her ex lover Gabriel talking about their past, which I sat through as I would, and just tried to get something out of it, and it was just, I think it would, it would make much more sense if it weren't, if they would acknowledge the fact that they were in their room outside of their voices, because as, as, um, as previously figured out, to, to, um, to make it as succinct as possible, Ain't nobody look at nobody in this film. It's like, eye contact is non-existent. Nobody looks at anybody. It's just, it's like, and it, I know that's, I know that's, that's supposed to make it more dramatic, but it also, it sets itself up for a good level of parody. If you do this throughout your entire film. If you're so dramatic that you can't look at your lover you must express yourself looking in the mirror. There's shots where you could see, like, one of the lovers, like, talking to Gertrude, and you only see her in the mirror, and he's looking at her through them, looking at her, and you see her in the mirror, and she's looking at him, so it's like, it's like, oh my god, artsy fartsy criterion. Ugh. Anyway, so, yeah. Like I said, if I'm ordering these, Ordet, Day of Wrath, Gertrude. If we put, now if we put, um, though I think I still would, I would watch this again over Passion of Joan of Arc. I still think this is probably better than Passion of Joan of Arc. Now that being said, I don't remember what I rated Passion of Joan of Arc, but because of this movie, I'm going to give it, let's see, I think I gave, I think I gave, I'm going to give it a, I'm going to give Gertrude a C minus. No. I'm going to give it a, yeah, I'm going to give it a C minus. It'd be one thing if I understood what was going on better and if I understood what was going on, period. And like just the movie was, but the movie was just like really long takes and just, you know, really dramatic and all that. Um, but I didn't know, I didn't understand what the hell was going on. And it's, and it's, like, bad enough that just people just don't look at each other and, like, it's, like, devoid of passion. But maybe that's part of it. That's probably supposed to be the whole thing. It's about love and not passion or anything like that. Even though there are moments that are supposed to evoke passion. You know, a very distilled passion. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, this one wasn't great. Oh, I'd still watch it over Picnic at Hanging Rock. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Anyway. So. Gertrude, yep. C minus, yeah. I'd give it a C if I knew what was going on in it, but because I didn't know a sliver of what was going on, I gotta give it a C minus. Sorry. I, yeah, I don't... I think I gave... I think I gave Dave Rath a C plus, I think. So, I'm good on that. Um, let's see. Deleted uh, special features. More more deleted footage from my miter. My miter. I've been calling it my miter, but now I realize that the T and the I are reversed. I'm so dyslexic. My mit mi miter. My miter. Probably my master. Probably. Um, yeah, there's two actors. Uh, Bard O O, who played uh, I think Gabriel. Bard O O, who played uh, Erland. And uh, 
Axel Strobir, who played Axel Nichen. And uh, then there's a couple of, um, few, about six or seven, about six minutes of, uh, six or seven minutes of archival footage from the time of Gertrude's production, which is uh, shot by Horkan Roos, who I think is his uh, photography editor or film editor or something. So you get to see Dreyer in action and like shots of him at the premiere and hits him like winning this award, this v I think Vienna movie award or something like that. And um, yeah, and of course the stills gallery, just shots of things. So yeah, Ertrude. Uh, so tomorrow is the New Year's Eve. And we're going to celebrate the only way Criterion people like me know how with my mate, Mateer. See, I'm going to call it my miter. I don't know. Number 128. My lucky number at that. So maybe this one will be good. Maybe the documentary about him will be good compared to the actual movies he puts out. Um, yeah, I still need to look up and see if... If they're in print because I wouldn't like I said I would not mind getting Ordet. I kind of dug Ordet, Ordet compared to the others. I I don't want to get Day of Wrath or Gertrude or Passion Jennifer, but Ordet was different. It was an interesting discussion. I like the the religious overtones and all that. Very interesting. But yeah, so tomorrow we're gonna find out about this dude. We go we gonna find out about this dude, and then hopefully we're gonna get to a movie that is not in Danish. So yep. Anyway, so that's it for me. Uh, yeah, tomorrow, this, and then next week we'll get to shop on, I think, Main Street or shop on some street, uh, closely watch trains, and then, oh, and Latrue, Latrue is first, and then shop on Main Street and closely watch trains. That'll probably be, um, all next week. Um, actually, we might do Latrue Thursday. We might do Latrue Thursday, so we'll see, just to get it out of the way. Um, and because it's one that I can't get the DVD for, but it's on YouTube, so because I have time for it, it's just the movie, too, so this is like two-hour movie, so we'll knock it out. Do the review, and then, I don't know. Um, hopefully I've got, I don't know, I didn't check if I had the shop movie or closely watched trains, but, oh, crap, I just realized they're not in English. Oh, my God, I think they're more Danish films. I think, well, the true is in French. At least we have that. At least closely watched trains is a, is a humor, is a comedy too so that'll be cool and yeah so that's it for me thanks for watching uh don't fall in love with a bunch of lovers and uh don't necessarily you don't necessarily have to put wor uh, love over work uh or work over love and um look at people look people in the eye god damn it look at what i'm doing i'm looking you square in the eye because i can do that Anyway, thanks for watching, and we'll see you tomorrow for the final entry in the Carl Theodore Drive box. Goodbye.